it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make and help meet for him. I know we read it before, but there must be a reason why we're reading it again. God provided for Adam. God himself decided, I will make and help meet for him. The word make is to bring something out of nothing. Is to bring the visible out of the invisible. It is to bring what is known out of the unknown. Now, who can do that? To make something out of nothing. To bring the, invis the visible out of the invisible. And to bring a known thing out of the unknown. That is the area of God's power and God's provision. Sometimes what bothers us today in marriage is that how will I be able to get that visible man, that visible woman out of the invisible? How will I be able to bring something and someone out of nothing? That is the area of God. And it is God himself that makes that provision. And if you understand that God has no problem in doing that, then you will be able to rely on God, that God will give you that provision. Let's look at that example in Genesis chapter 24. Genesis chapter 24, verse 7. And the Lord, the Lord God of heaven, which took me from my father's house and from the land of my kindred, and spake, which spake unto me, and that swear unto me, saying, Unto thy seed will I give this land. He shall send his angel before thee, and thou shalt take a wife unto my son from thence. Please understand. In the case of Adam, the Lord God said, I will make and help meet for him. Here we are now, in the case of Abraham's son. Again, the Lord God of heaven. You see, the emphasis had not changed. The provision of a wife, the provision of a husband, is still coming from the Lord God of heaven. And you need to understand that in your own life as well. It is still the Lord God of heaven that will make that provision for you. I know we studied this passage before in the church, but let me show you something that we're missing out as a church. Now we need to listen so you don't miss it again because we missed it before. Isaac had not married. Abraham, the father, was concerned. And Eliezer, the chief servant, the chief steward of the house of Abraham, was concerned. And looking at the whole chapter, the concern and the prayer and the intercession of Abraham and Eliezer were even more intense and more serious than the desire and the plan of or the prayer of Isaac. It was the father of Isaac here that called the chief steward of his house, the eldest servant of his house, and he said, Isaac must not make a mistake in marriage. Let's do something about it. Let's find out from God about it. Let's depend on God about it, that the God of heaven will send his angel before you and take a wife for my son Isaac. Listen to me. Marriage is so important for every member of the church. That the pastor cannot just overlook the marriage of the members of the church. And you cannot hide yourself and your need from your father in the Lord. And I must not only teach about marriage, I must pray about your marriage. But obviously, I do not know everybody and I cannot touch the life of everybody. But then we have coordinators. And coordinators and zonal leaders must have such a great concern 
for the marriage of the people that are not married yet. We must not say, well, they have got the teaching. They have known all the steps. And we have made it very clear in the church, all the processes, how to get married. We too must do like Abraham and also the eldest servant. As coordinators, you must be in agreement with the pastor and we must pray. In our families, individually, we must pray for our young people and the single people who have not married. And we must break whatever yoke and whatever hindrance is disturbing them from actually getting married. It is our responsibility and we must pray that God will send his angel and send a spirit before our single people so that God will find for them the people they ought to get married to. Now, single people, let me talk to you. You know, sometimes we make a mistake. I think I understand you. The mistake we make is that we hide our need from our leaders. We hide the need of getting married. The need, the burden we have of wanting to get married, we hide it from the coordinator. We hide it from the zonal leader. We hide it from the woman coordinator. We hide it from the woman representative. We hide from the IFL representative. We hide from all the leaders that God has put over us in the church. I think the reason you do that is because all of us, as leaders, what we have done in the past is only to teach you and to correct you. Maybe some of us pray for you, but you have not seen that we are really concerned and we are really interceding for you. But now a change must come. On the part of our leaders, they must become seriously concerned for the marriage of the single people. And they must pray for them. And those men who are leaders in our church here. Now, leaders, when I say leaders, I mean those who are helping us and leading us and teaching us. You know them in your own district, in your own zone, in your own area, or even in your own house fellowship. The people that you have grown to love, you have grown to respect, and you know by the grace of God, they are real shepherds, and they have the shepherd heart. And you should confide in those people and talk to them about your body and about what you feel. And leaders, let me talk to you. When all these brothers and sisters confide in you, do not gossip, do not talk, or do not criticize them. They, may, they might have made their mistakes. Let's do like Abraham. Let's do like Eliezer. And take their problems to the Lord on our knees. Because their marriages are so very important. And you men, you'll go to the men who are leaders. You women, you'll go to the women who are leaders. The women coordinator, the women representatives, the women area leaders. And all the other matured women. And you women, whenever these uh, sisters, whenever they talk with you, and they share their body with you on marriage. Do like Abraham. Do like the eldest servant. And do not talk about it to your husband. Your husband may be a coordinator. Your husband may be a zonal leader. And me as a pastor, you may go to my wife. I've already instructed her. She shouldn't talk to me about it. All she should be concerned about, all that the wives of the coordinators should be concerned about, all that the wives of the zonal leaders and the other women who are leading in our various places, all we should be concerned about is praying for our young people that they will not make a mistake in marriage, that God will guide them, that the angel of the Lord will go before them. That's what we're interested in. So women and men, brothers and sisters, who are looking up to the Lord, confide in somebody. Have interest in somebody who is elderly, who is a child of God. Among these, our leaders. And let us help you. Let us pray for you. And when I have the opportunity that I'm in touch with your life, don't say, well, it's a pastor. He's not thinking about that thing. Well, I think about it because it's important for you. And I'm not only to preach. I'm also to pray for you. And so Abraham told Eliezer, and he said, The Lord will send his angel before you. And I'm telling you here tonight as well, The Lord will send his angel before you. The Lord will send his spirit before you. 
Now, we cannot cover everything on the outline tonight. I will incorporate what remains in the future outline that I'll prepare in the series that we have. And I'm believing God that things are going to change. I'm believing God that the burdens of our hearts are going to be lifted in Jesus' name. And all the mistakes we have made, you might have made a mistake before. Now, area leaders and zonal leaders and coordinators, some of our brothers and sisters will be coming to you. And they'll be revealing the mistakes they made before. Now, if they reveal those mistakes they made before, we are not to abuse them or we are not to criticize them or condemn them. They are telling us so that we can pray for them and so that the mistakes of the past will be completely solved. And I pray that God will help those of us who are leaders and those of us who are single and all of us together as a church that those who are looking up to God and they need to get married, God's plan will be revealed in your personal life. God's purpose will be fulfilled in your personal life. And God's provision will come to you. Let's rise up and pray. Let's love one another, pray for one another, help one another. And if you're looking up to the Lord for a life partner, you pray yourself. You need to pray. And believe in God. God has a plan for you. God has a purpose for your life. And God's provision will be made available to you if you'll pray in faith, having confidence in God. Our Father, we bless your name this afternoon. We praise you because you give us life to live. And you are willing to help us live that life. We are asking that as we open our eyes this afternoon to see why we are here, where we are going, what we ought to be doing, what we shall receive after doing what we ought to do. We are asking that every one of us will come to know and to understand what will make you happy in our lives. Lay your gentle hand upon every heart <laughs> and lead us in the right way. In Jesus' name we pray. It's quite an interesting crowd of people that we have here this day. There are people who have been used to coming to this place and always rejoice whenever they come here. Other people started coming just recently and um, they've been trying to understand all that we're reading and explaining from the word of God. And yet there are others who have been used to going to some other places and this may all be new to them as we're here today. They're used to going to meetings and places where the speaker just makes everybody happy and they laugh and forget their sorrows temporarily and then maybe later when they go back home they start the serious problems again in their lives but there are others who are looking for an opportunity to laugh we go to the theater but when we're looking for an opportunity to think we come to the church and so I'll be saying some things this morning that will make you think. And sometimes we can think while we're laughing. Sometimes we can be thinking while we're weeping. And sometimes while we look um, without any emotion, we can be thinking as well. Because uh, this afternoon we're talking on purpose for living. And then we'll be looking briefly at partner for your life. 
Many people have thought about having partner for their lives, but they have not thought about having a purpose for their living. And I'm here to tell you that purpose must always come before the partner. And then you must realize that you are not alone here just by your doing. You are created. You are made. And God has his hand upon your life. And from the time you are born into this world till the time you leave the world, God is interested in what are you doing. Going to school and passing out of school. Going into trade and into, into business. Making money, earning money, and then spending money. While in a way, the time in relaxation and um, recreation. Traveling for sightseeing and for education and instruction. Coming back home to settle down in the community and have a part in what people are doing in society. At home or abroad. Within the family or in the marketplace. On Sunday or during the week. God is eagerly waiting that a time will come in your life when you will ask, What is the purpose for my living? If you read your Bible very well, you'll discover that God is a God of plan. And whenever God is involved with any sin, anywhere, anytime, there's something significant you see. He is a planner. If he is uh, getting involved in building a tabernacle in the wilderness, he has a plan. If he is involved in building a temple while the people are settled in the land of Palestine, he has a plan. If he is sending a son, Jesus Christ, into the world, he has a plan. And for everyone that is born into this world, God is interested, God is involved, and God is the planner. In Exodus chapter 25, it's in verse 40 that we read this interesting verse. Talking to us about the plan of God. In this case, for a temporal scene in the wilderness called the tabernacle. Exodus chapter 25, verse 40. And look that thou make them after their pattern, which was showed thee. In the mount. God had told Moses that a tabernacle was to be built. That tabernacle had three different sections or compartments. The outer court. That was a place um, that was on the outside of the tabernacle proper. Next to that, there was the holy place. Next to that, the holy of holies, where the Shekinah glory, the light of God, was all the all the while burning, where the ark was uh, was, and where the cherubim were. And where continually the presence of God was felt. Now, 
And God will not allow the children of Israel just to build anyhow, anything that they wanted. God is a planner. And when he gets involved in with anything and anyone at any time, he always makes the plan and the pattern very, very clear. I told you just now that the tabernacle at the outer court, the holy place, and the holy of holies, and you have an outer court, your body. After your body, then you have the soul. After the soul, you have the inner man, Le which is the spirit. Do you want to tell me that if God will take interest in wanting to plan before a tabernacle it was built, that he doesn't have any plan for your soul, for your spirit, and for your body? He has a plan for you. Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever asked God about that plan? Do you know whether you are building according to the plan of your life or you are not building according to any plan? First Chronicles chapter 28. Chronicles chapter 28. Here the temple was to be built. And David was interested in building this temple. Of course he didn't have the chance. Because again God had another purpose or plan for him. But Solomon was to be the person to build that temple. Here is what we read about that temple. First Chronicles chapter 28 verse 2. Then David the king stood up upon his feet and said, Hear me, my brethren and my people, as for me I had in my heart to build an house of rest for the ark of the covenant of the Lord and for the footstool of our God and had made ready for the building. Go over to verse 11. Then David gave to Solomon, his son, the pattern of the porch, and of the houses thereof, and of the treasuries thereof, and of the upper chambers thereof, and of the inner palace thereof, and of the place of the mercy seat, every detail was outlined. Solomon, 